Hello YouTube, today we're going to be talking about how to set up your Zentral server so that you can use it as a PDC. So um, what we've done here is we've installed Zentral in a virtual machine, but this can be on a local server if you'd like, and then it will auto sign in for you, and it'll just bring up um, Firefox here, and you can sign in just fine here. Um, what we're actually going to do is continue this tutorial from a, from a web browser. So we're going to open up a nice um, terminal here. We'll show you, oh, excuse me, typed in, we'll just type an ifconfig here. We can see our IP address. This actually needs to be changed if you're on um, uh, Oracle VirtualBox. You can just go to settings and then go to network. And then just go to bridged adapter, hit OK, and close that. And then if we recheck this, we just have to do sudo etc init.d networking restart. Enter in our password. And then we're just restarting our. Um, adapter here. And now if we type an ifconfig, there we go. We see that we have our new IP address of 192.168.0.109. Okay, so that's great. Um, now let's go into our browser, so any browser of choice, and let's do https colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.109. Hit enter, and then hit proceed anyway. And we can see here that it's just like that page that we pulled up here, except for it's in your browser. So I mean, that's that's the um, advantage of using it in your browser. We're just going to type in our password, our username and password, and then hit enter. And it'll bring you right into the installer. And now this installer will allow you to choose um, different packages. Um, what I like to do is just select all of them, just in case y'all ever need one. Um, we'll also select backup, bandwidth monitor, uh, captive portal, groupware. You really don't need all of this if you're just doing um, a, a PDC. And we'll do, this should be set. And then we'll just hit install here. And then it'll take us to the install. Now the install will um, take some time. You just have to confirm this. The install may take some time depending on your internet connection. I know I selected all of them, so in that case it's going to take um, well over 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to resume when it begins installing. So we've now come to 100%. It just has a few actions to complete. There's about six left. And the installation process actually didn't take longer than about 15 minutes, 15 to 17. And we can um, see here that it is um, almost done. And then after it is finished, it'll ask us about Ethernet adapters, and then it'll take us into the dashboard. And it's just on the last action currently, and it should just bring us to the next page any minute. As the um, installation process is continuing, you can see here that they display nice tips about um, Zentral here. And now you can see here that everything has been fine. Um, now we're going to configure our Ethernet adapter. We're going to select internal, but if you have multiple Ethernet adapters, it'll give you the option to select internal and external. From now on, internal will be just fine. We'll hit next. And then we're going to say, you can say DHCP or static. We did static in, an, in another server. We're going to do DHCP for now. We'll hit next. And then we're just going to do standalone server. You can set up things like master, slave, and AD sync.
and we have a virtual mail domain to set up. We're just going to say Zensual virtual mail dot com. It doesn't have to be anything valid in this case, but you you're free to set up whatever you want. If later you want to set up a mail domain, then you can go right ahead. Hit next, and we're going to sign into our Zensual cloud. I already have a um, an account here, so I'm just going to go ahead and sign. And you can see here, I've entered in all my data, and it'll ask you for your server name. I'll just put in Zential Virtual Server and hit subscribe, or you can just hit finish. And we just have to correct one thing here. There we are, we now hit finish. This is optional too, you can easily skip this if you don't want to connect to the Zential Cloud. But the Zential Cloud allows you to get basic reporting on um, your server status and um, some backups. So this will take um, relatively long. It's just going to sync your server to the Zential Cloud. And when it's done, we should be able to continue on. Now we have finished, we can go ahead and hit Save Changes. And then it's just going to start up some modules and save some information to them. And I did not mention this earlier, but you can find Zential on Zential.com. And then you can just click on Download, and then download whichever version you would like. They have both 32 and 64 for your needs. So we can see that we are done here. It just says that, we, that two of the modules have failed. Um, just mail and mail filter. We're not currently working with mail, so this should be fine. And we'll just return to the dashboard. Now I've noticed that the mail and mail filter both failed on another system I set up, so it might be a bug. Um, also, the dashboard seems to take a considerable amount of time to load. Alright, now we are in our server, and we can see um, there's this page is just filled with stuff, and one of the things here is security updates. You can go ahead and enable that right here if you'd like. Um, for now, we're going to navigate over to file sharing. File sharing will bring us to a Samba configuration, basically. Now, what we want to do is hit Enable PDC. That was already checked, but if it is not, then check that. And let's name this our Zential Virtual PDC. And all caps for that. NetBIOS name, you can leave this like you want. And then our description here, we can say domain primary domain controller and then we want to enable roaming profiles and we'll say drive letter H and we're gonna say all users so we're gonna hit change and then we're gonna have to hit save changes when we're done but we're not quite done yet so we're just gonna leave that till later and we're gonna say disabled for password length hit change on that shares we can add a new share and let's enable the share and let's call this we're going to set up a scenario where it's basically a school network and you have teachers and students and students won't be able to actually choose to remove any of the files from the share drive or edit them but they can see them so let's call this share drive in fact let's do just the shared because i've noticed with spaces this causes problems in mounting. And we'll say directory under Zential, and this will just be S. And for comment, we'll just say user shared drive. And then we don't want guest access in this particular case, but if you'd like to, then you can go ahead and hit add. This will populate here. We're going to set access control later, but for now we can leave that alone. We'll go to recycle bin. We can enable that, we'll hit change there, and antivirus is actually a pretty cool feature. You can enable that if you'd like, we'll leave it off for now, and we'll hit save changes. 
and hit save changes and it'll just update the modules just like we saw at the end of the installation process. After this is saved we're going to go ahead and activate a user group or excuse me we're going to have to make three users and two groups. One group will be students, one will be teachers, and then under our users we're going to have student one, teacher one, and admin. And admin will be the administrator of our uh, primary domain controller. So let's click here to return to the dashboard. You could also go directly to another um, section. So now our PDC is turned on, but it isn't actually configured correctly. So what we have to do is go to users and groups and set up our groups here. And by clicking users and groups, it'll expand here. And we're going to hit groups. We're going to create a group called teachers. And this is optional for the value here. We're going to add an edit. And then we can set users in this group for now, but this is fine. And then we'll do another group. And this will be students. So just as before, add and edit. And now what we want to do is, even though there are no unsafe changes, just go ahead and click that. Go to users. And let's create teacher1. And their first name will be teacher. And then their last name is T. Comment, that's optional. Their password will be test and then test again, group, teachers, that's simple, add and edit, this is actually where we need to edit it, um, you don't need asterisk, captive, or jabber, or mail, but we do want PDC file sharing account, so they do not have administrative rights, and their user account is enabled, so that is fine, let's go ahead, go back to users, let's add a new user, this will be student1, first name of student, last name of s, comment, no comment, password test, password test. Group, again, is students, add and edit, and that is set. And now let's go back to users, and let's create our last user called admin. First name is admin, last name is a, Password will be admin, password admin, and this is where we want to do add and edit. It won't be a part of a group, and in PDC, we're going to hit administrative rights, hit change, and now we're going to save our changes just as we did before, and we'll save that out. And the part after this is going to deal with joining that PDC using Windows 7. This will also work just fine with Windows XP and Windows Vista. We can see here that it's just saving. We're just going to return to the dashboard. And while that loads, we're going to go to our Zential server. We're going to minimize this window. And then we can open this window here. We have a little file manager. Let's go ahead and open that. And let's switch to this file view. And then we can see here that we are in slash home. Let's go to Samba. And let's go to NetLogin. Because we're going to store a script under NetLogin that will be run that will run when a user signs in. And we're going to call this login.bat. So let's move this window down here so that we can see that path. What we want to do is sudo nano for our editor, and we want slash home slash samba slash net logon forward slash logon dot, dot bat. And dot bat stands for batch, which is actually a Windows file, and our password. And we have our empty f uh, file here. So we have to, um, in order to see these um, folders that we created in Windows 7, we have to have these mapped as drives. So what we have to do 
is basically type in net use and then our drive so h and then what we had was our server our server was our NetBIOS name. We can get that by going to File Share. And actually, under Host Name, that will be our um, our mount point. So we'll do Zenshul PDC Virtual, just as we see here. and you can just leave that and then backslash and then the username so percent then username percent and that'll automatically return the username variable and then we want net use s zenshul pdc virtual backslash shared for our shared path. And then to write out, we're just gonna hit Control, then O. That'll write out and hit Enter. Now back in our dashboard, let's go to our shares and let's set some access control. So with access control, we can change what groups have what permissions. So let's say the group of um, students has read-only ability. So we'll hit Add there. And now let's add a new Access control, we'll go to group, teachers, and they can read and write. You could also make them administrator. And then hit save changes. Hit save again. And now we can begin signing into this PDC. So let's start up Windows 7 Enterprise. We can also use whichever Windows 7 version you'd like. And we're just going to wait for this to boot up. Our changes have been saved in our central um, control panel here, and Windows 7 is opening up. And we are in our Windows 7 machine. So let's go and try to join this domain. So let's go to right click on computer, go to properties, go to change settings, where it says um, change its domain go ahead hit change and this was the name that we had here so we can go to file sharing and it was Zenshul virtual pdc Zenshul virtual pdc hit ok and i know that this will fail okay and the reason for this failing is that the um, Windows 7 machine needs to have a um, script. Well, actually, it needs to change some registry values that allow it to join a Samba domain. And this is on the Samba wiki. I have a, if I close all these windows and look at my desktop, I have a file here. If you just right click and open this up, in a text editor you can just see that it's going to edit the registry and we're just going to close this and then right click hit merge hit yes <clears throat> and then hit yes to allow and hit ok and it has been changed so now actually you have to shut down your machine in order to get it to work properly so let's shut this down As you can see here, we're back inside of our Windows machine. Let's just go to Computer, Properties, and then we'll change those settings. And then hit Change. And then what we want here is Zenshul Virtual PDC, and hit OK. And there is a small problem here. 
So the fix to that problem was actually quite hysterical. The domain name should be something sh relatively short. The NetBIOS name, though, has to be under 15 characters. Um, that seemed to fix the problem. And um, we're back in our Windows 7 Enterprise server. So we just entered in Central P PDC, and that got us in just fine. So now it's asking for our credentials, and we need an administrator in order to um, set this up with the domain. So let's type in admin and admin, because if you remember, that's who we set up as an administrator of this Samba PDC. And so any second now we'll see a confirmation box saying that you are now a part of the domain and that you'll have to restart in order for settings to take effect. Um, once we restart, we'll have to switch the computer to log in directly to the domain instead of the um, actual computer itself and once we log in it should map our H and S drive just fine. In another tutorial I'll be um, covering how to change the pointing of like my documents and my pictures and my videos to some place on your share that way when you move from place to place your stuff is referenced correctly. And we can see here that we are in our PDC domain. So we'll hit OK, and then we'll hit OK again, hit Close, hit Restart Now. And now we are in our um, Windows machine. So you may see something familiar where it says press Control alt delete to log in. We'll insert Control alt delete And we're going to hit Switch User, Other User. And let's sign in as Teacher1 with our password of test. And this will log us into our PDC. Now, it'll take a while to log in to our um, domain initially because it has to download our roaming profile but once that is downloaded it should be fast um, there's another setting in the group policy manager that I'll go over in another video to speed up domain logins and then you should have logins of about oh, 10 to 15 seconds and we are in our Windows system so um, as you can see, our file is no longer here because we are on a different user. If we go to Start, My Computer, we can see that it's already pulled the name from the server. We'll hit dot, uh, computer, excuse me. And our, um, our script has seemed to not find the shares. That's because we changed our NetBIOS name. So I'm going to go ahead and change that real quickly. And then I'll be back shortly. So we are now in our Windows 7 server. If we go to Start Computer, we can see here that both of our drives have been mapped. We should be able to create a new folder just fine here, and then name it whatever we can name it Math. And then if files wanted to be put in there, we could go ahead and do that. And then in our H drive, we can see here that there is nothing. So another cool thing that you can do within Zential is set quotas on what a user can do. So let's actually go back to users and groups. Let's go to users. And we're going to set a quota on student one so that they can only um, use. So you can also go to user template and set a default quota. Um, but we'll go back to users and we'll say that student will get, and this is in megabytes, so we'll say that they'll get 500 megabytes for their H drive. We'll change that. And then on our teacher, 
we'll say that their usage quota is two gigabytes. Then hit change. And then hit save changes. And then that should be just fine. So now when we log out, let's log in as student. And it'll have to run through the process of downloading the um, profile scripts. Insert control alt delete. And let's say student one test. And now that's just going to take the time to log. And we're in our system. So let's go to computer. And all of a sudden we see that both of our drives are mapped here and we can see that there is 500 megabytes on this student's drive. So they couldn't put a file on here that's larger than that size and that will serve as a nice means of saving space on your server. And so this is how you set up a PDC using Zential. If you guys like this video, please rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in other videos. And if you would like any tutorials, please request them. Bye.